So that generator, the guy's gonna check up and see why it said it couldn't be shipped to the store there since it did show that it was CARB compliant, which is California's emission standard or whatever. So anything that isn't CARB can't be shipped into or sold basically in California. It can be used in California, but it can't be sold there. Holy day, I break these chains. I'm bound for the life of the simple things. So he's gonna check and see what's going on since it did say it was CARB compliant and why it was telling me it couldn't be shipped. And I'm gonna check with him tomorrow on that. Carolina here got hungry. So we're gonna go grab some food before we continue out generator shopping. And we got an errand to run out to Pia Pico to check on some mail. And I'm not into the uh, breakfast anymore. When I go to IHOP now, I actually found a salad that I like. And it's pretty hard to get me to eat anything with green leafy vegetables. So let's see where it's at. There it is. Chicken and spinach salad. Grilled or crispy chicken, hickory smoked bacon, hard boiled egg, tomatoes and cheddar on a bed of spinach tossed in honey balsamic vinaigrette. So I really like this salad and I'm not really into eating green leafy vegetables, but I do kind of like spinach when it's fresh. So that's what I'm gonna order. Every once in a while, I try to eat truly healthy, but most of the time, that one meal that I get to eat anything I want, I'm not a very good boy. Guys, so this here is some solid grub. You still have the stuff that makes everything taste good, but you also have the stuff in here that's healthy for you. So I think it's a great score. We just realized that we basically have the whole restaurant to ourselves. <laughs> that was a good salad. You guys should try it if you're ever at IHOP on a lunch. All right guys, so we're over here at Pia Pico, gonna check on the mail before we head out generator shopping. So we got the uh, reservation that we needed for Wednesday here in a couple of days made. Ready to get on out of here. We'll talk to you again when we get over to Fry's Electronics. It's supposed to have some great deals on inverter generators. If you guys aren't familiar with Fry's Electronics, it's like a nerd's heaven over here. Like everything you could think of electronic wise is here if you want to build your own computer or you're into doing circuits and stuff like that you get that stuff over here along with like pretty good prices on almost any electronics you can think of i don't remember the fries having a food court so that's kind of new but like i said any kind of electronics you could think of it's a huge store too it's like the walmart of electronics And they got inverter generators here. You gotta find them. And here are generators. Holy cow. Oh yeah, but that's not a, that one's not an inverter generator though, is it? No, it's $2.99, but not an inverter generator. Neither are these. Is the champion the inverter generator? Yeah, that's the inverter generator, the Champion one. Where's the pricing on that? I'll have to ask somebody, I guess. Five ninety nine. Twenty two hundred uh 2200 watt continuous that's pretty much really cheap so the honda at 2200 continuous like 16 or 1800 dollars 
It looks like that's it. You got the choice of the uh, Westinghouse or the Champion. All right, guys, so the generator that we ended up getting is the Sportsman here, and it fits so perfect right here in our bay. So I'm using this to keep the batteries charged up, and then I charge up the Kodiak as well. Now it has an eco mode. I'll go ahead and review it more in detail, but I'm pretty happy with it actually so far. I've only run it about 10 times, 12 times, but it starts up quickly, it runs well, uh, and it's better on fuel than what it said it would be online. So, and it just works so well for what we're doing. After I've used it a while longer, I'll go ahead and discuss it some more with you guys. Good morning there, guys. So I just got back into the RV park. So now it's going to be time to start doing some testing with the Kodiak and the different types of batteries that I picked up. And so the first one I'm going to do is on this Walmart battery. We're going to go ahead and see what kind of energy efficiency it has. Okay, so the battery we're running with is an Everstart. So with the core charge, this is about a $100 battery. It's rated for 122 amp hours. So that's the Walmart battery that I see a lot of folks picking up all the time. And it's designed to both give out cold cranking amps and to be good at drawing amp hours. From. Okay, so the battery charger here is saying that the battery has about 29% battery capacity right now so i purposely with drew it down to 30 percent is what i was trying to do which you really should not draw a battery any lower than that okay guys so i went ahead and drew it down to its lowest point so that we can figure out what kind of efficiency we have in charging this battery so i'm sending 15 amps into it as you can see here and it's obviously a 12 volt battery we're drawing 105 watts to the charger to put the power into the battery. I'll check when it stabilizes it because this is a smart charger. So it's going to basically charge the battery as fast as the battery will allow. 60 hertz is good. And so this here is going to tell us the actual wattage in kilowatts okay, that it took to charge up this battery in the end. And then we're gonna compare that to its rated capacity in kilowatt hours. So we'll do the math on that to see what kind of efficiency it is. Now, please understand that flooded lead acid batteries really should only be regularly discharged to 50%. I went down to 30, which an occasional time of doing that probably isn't gonna steal much battery life, but if you continuously discharge down to 30%, you will limit the lifespan of that battery. As you see there at 33%, it's stabilized as far as the watts that the charger's pulling, and we're starting to get some wattage draw accumulating. And so this isn't kilowatts, so that's actually going to be 50 watts total that has gone into here. So we'll go ahead and leave it alone. It's set itself up where it can draw at. As time goes on, this guy will actually slow down how much it's charging the battery to the level that it can accept. This is taking longer than I had expected. The battery's at 96%. But we have been going for 22 hours and it's still not fully charged. one point nine six kilowatts so far so it's taken more power to charge it to ninety six percent than it officially stores you know lead acid specifically at the very top you can't really charge it very rapidly so here we're only putting 18 watts into this so we're putting a little over an amp that would be called trickle charging it's in the trickles charge stage Okay guys, so the battery here is now at 100%. It ended up taking 1.98 kilowatt 
hours to go ahead and store 1.39 kilowatt hours. So this 100 amp hour battery, if you take it all the way down to 30% discharge, and then you charge it up according to what you should utilize as far as the rate you should charge it to give it the longest life, it'll take around 34 hours. And on a quick charge, you're probably looking at still 12 to 18 hours, even in a larger battery bank. And at 1.98 kilowatts for a storage of 1.39, that's not that great really either. So I already knew that the efficiency wasn't gonna be wonderful when we're talking about lead acid period, but it's just interesting to see how big of a deal is that, that is. We'll go ahead and do some math here in a moment, but I'm gonna get ready and hook up the Kodiak and we're gonna see at what rate it charges up. I'm going to be doing the calculation now on the efficiency of charge of that Walmart battery. So 100% is equal to one. So we take one minus the 0.29, okay, which represents the 29% that the battery still had, which gives us 0.71. So that means that 71% of the battery's capacity was needed to charge it from that 29% up to 100% full. So we'll take that 0.71 and we'll multiply it by the rating in kilowatt hours of our battery. So our Walmart battery is rated to have 1.39 kilowatt hours of storage capacity. So we take that 0.9869 that we have there, and then we're gonna divide it by the 1.98 kilowatt hours that we had put into the battery through the charger according to our kilowatt meter. And that gives us a charge efficiency of that battery, of that Walmart battery of 0.4984. So now we go ahead and we multiply it by 100, which will equal our percentage. So our Walmart battery was 49.84% efficient at taking on a charge. This AC-DC adapter here for the Kodiak puts out no more than a maximum of 15 amps itself at 12 volts. So that's a max of 15 amps, just like our battery charger was able to do a max of 15 amps. I wanted to keep them coordinated. Now we're looking at the Kodiak. The Kodiak is completely discharged. So this would be technically zero, right? So it's not even able to really turn on the inverter. We're only drawing about 8.83 volts, so it's pretty much 100% dead. There's no indicators at all. So now doing it that way, what I'm doing is kind of comparing about the same amount of power that needs to go into this as needed to go into the lead acid battery. So we're gonna have to put the full 90 amp hours pretty much into this Kodiak where we put a about 84 amp hours into the lead acid battery. And now I'm gonna go ahead and hook it up and we will see at how long it will take this Kodiak to get charged up, number one. Number two, we'll see how much power is needed to get to the 1.1 kilowatt hour rating of the Kodiak. Okay, so we're starting here at 0.00, .00 kilowatts kilowatt hours i should say we have fairly clean power pretty much 60 hertz here and already we're drawing about 196 watts to get started charging up the kodiak that's pretty close to our 15 amps it's just shy of it we're back from home from work this is at 12.45 volts no more power going into it it's all the way charged up so we are looking at 1.18 kilowatt hours of power that's been used. And the Kodiak's rated for 1.1 kilowatt hours. So it's been really efficient. 
We have been charging for 13 hours and 39 minutes now. Okay, let's go ahead and do the numbers for the Kodiak now. Now, we are pretty much were completely empty with the Kodiak. We were reading less than nine volts. There was absolutely no indicators showing. So we were putting pretty dang close and we're gonna assume 100% of the rated capacity of the Kodiak into it. Now, we know that the Kodiak is rated for 1.1 kilowatt hours in total storage capacity. So we're gonna go ahead and divide that by the 1.18 kilowatt hours that according to the kilowatt millimeter that we had put in, into the Kodiak, which is going to give us 0.9322. And we wanna turn this decimal into a percentage. So we're gonna multiply it by 100. And that gives us a efficiency of charge of the Kodiak of 93.22%. Big difference, big difference. So what does all this efficiency mathematic mumbo jumbo means? It basically means that the Kodiak is at least twice as efficient at taking on a charge. So that means that if you are running a generator, it's gonna take half as long to put in the same amount of power. It's gonna take half the fuel basically. Also, if you have a solar system, to charge up that Walmart battery compared to charging up the Kodiak, you're gonna to have to have twice the size of a solar array to be able to do that. So that's a major expense. Get out there, connect with people, live your big story, and make sure you do something every single day to reduce world suck. Peace, it's guys. It's been a long day without you, my friend. And I tell you all about it when I see you again. We come a long way from where we began. Oh, I tell you all about it when I see you.